Every single day, we are faced with disturbing news, whether it's through the TV or through the internet. And with all the uncertainties of life that we're faced with on a daily basis, it behooves me to continue to strive, to endeavor, to try to be more self-sufficient and to grow food as much as I can, as often as I can, and as long as I can. Hi, I'm Annette and welcome to Kitchen Garden Farmhouse. Today, I'm going to be going over 10 top ways in growing food, even if you do not have a lot of space. Let's get started. Number one, only grow food that you really like to eat if you're very limited in space. How many times have we looked through a seed catalog and we saw something because it looked so unusual, so pretty, so colorful, and we just wanted to grow it, but it really did not turn out in putting food on our tables. If that's ever happened to you, leave me a comment below. Or what is your favorite food to grow? Let me know that in the comments below as well. After you have made a decision on the foods you really like to eat and which ones would be the most productive to grow in your small spaces to put food on your table, then you have to figure out how much of that do you have to grow in order to make a meal out of it, depending on how large your family is. Keeping good records of what you planted and how many plants you planted will help you as the seasons go by to determine as time goes on exactly how much of that one crop you have to grow to be sufficient in putting food on your table for a meal. Number three, to grow more food in a small space, get a raised bed, whether it's directly on the ground or up off the ground. A raised bed like the square foot gardening method will allow you to grow food in a compact area and it would be very productive and very space saver as far as getting a lot of food grown in a small area. Also, when you grow in a raised bed, it allows you to grow a little bit sooner when the weather is cooler because anytime soil is up off the ground in the cool, cold months, it's going to warm up faster versus being down there in the ground row by row traditional garden method. Number four, grow in containers. There are so much food that you can grow in containers. It's amazing and they're mobile. I was able to pick up these containers and put these on the table so I can show them to you. I've got a lot more growing in containers than these but I held zinnias this is alpine strawberries, and this is honey rock cantaloupe. And I have a lot more containers around the property growing food, including Irish potatoes and other things. So containers are so wonderful to grow in, and there's so many containers to choose from. You don't have to grow in just plastic. You can grow into grow bags, wooden boxes, cardboard boxes, hanging baskets, um, wash tubs. There's so many containers that you can grow in. And it's a wonderful way to grow food because think about it, if you are living on someone else's property that you're renting and the day comes that you move, um, all those years that you work building up the soil in the ground is only going to be beneficial to someone else. You cannot take all that with you. If you have a lot of raised beds, yeah, you can take those with you, but it's going to be a lot harder than just picking up containers and moving them to your new property. So definitely, if you live on someone else's property, containers is a must. But even if you're living on your own property, containers is a great way to grow a lot of food in a small space. Number six, to grow more food in small spaces, do succession planting. So what I mean by that, try to grow more food within that season. While some plants like this cantaloupe is already started here, I'm gonna go ahead and get another cantaloupe started in a cell tray and get a few weeks growth behind that one. So when this one is ready to harvest, I already have another plant that's got a few weeks of growth on it to plant in its place. So succession planting is actually a good way to double your production within one season if you have limited space or containers to grow in. Number seven, forget the line. Now don't get me wrong, lawns and yards are beautiful, but when it comes to growing food, we cannot eat the grass. When it comes to limited space, what are we going to choose? Yards or food? Myself, I choose food. So a good thing to do is to grow in your lawn where you would normally have just grass. Now, if you live in a home that even if you own it, you live in a HOA, a homeowners association, uh, subdivision, you might be limited. However, there are many vegetables that you can grow in your front yard 
that people will not even really pay any attention to it. It will look like ornamentals. It just look like a beautiful garden. You can just kind of grow things in between your flowers and stuff and still have food in your front lawn. Now, if you live in the HOA, you might be limited on how many square feet in the backyard you can grow in, but I would take advantage of every square foot that I had if I was in that situation. So definitely grow food, not lawns, if you wanna be more sustainable. Number eight, to grow more food in smaller spaces, intercrop. So for an example, I have a tomato growing here. It's gonna take a while for this tomato to grow. But there's other vegetables that I can grow in a small space, it won't take up much room, that would grow within 30 to 45 days, whether it be little small scallion onions or whether it's radishes or beets, depending on if you're in a warm season or a cool season, of course, that's going to determine what your picks will be. But definitely there is something that I can grow up underneath this tomato plant around the edges, whether it's flowers to uh, invite more pollinators into the garden, intercropping would be a great space saver and a way to grow more food in less space. Number nine, to grow more food in small spaces, try to grow year round, no matter what your weather conditions are. And I know all over the US, there's gonna be different weather conditions in different areas. However, there's different things that we can implement in our small spaces that could allow us to grow something if we just try to figure out what that could be that would work for us. For example, if you don't have room for a small greenhouse, maybe you have room for a low tunnel. Even if you've made a low tunnel over a container, putting some kind of little small hoop over it and putting a row cover over it, and then if it got too cold, put an additional plastic on top of the row cover and trying to create warmth for something to grow. And this is a great way to grow cool weather vegetables uh, in those types of climates. Because here in Florida, sometimes it's hard for us to even grow cool weather vegetables because it gets so hot so soon and things begin to bolt so quickly. So definitely trying to create microclimates in our little small spaces, we can grow more food. Number 10, to grow more food in small spaces, don't never give up. Try different varieties. Just because one variety did not work does not mean another variety will not work. There are so many varieties and options to choose from this day and time because we have a lot of hybrids, which is a cross between two different plants. And remember, a hybrid is not necessarily GMO. Matter of fact, you cannot even really buy GMOs. Those are patent and they're secured for the commercial growers. So definitely buying a seed that's a hybrid that is more disease resistant could be a good choice for you in your small area. So let's recap. Mostly grow the food that you like and the food that you're going to eat. Grow crops that are smaller in size, the dwarf and the miniature size. Grow in a raised bed. Grow in containers. Grow vertically. Grow in succession planting. Grow food, not lawns. Grow by intercropping. And grow year round. And never give up try different varieties, figure out which variety is gonna work best in your area. Thank you so much for watching, and if these tips were helpful to you, please take a moment to subscribe if you have not done so already. And every time you leave a like, comment, and share the video with others, you take a part in helping Kitchen, Garden, Farmhouse to grow. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video.